Hey there, this is Todd at Biz Ladder. This video is going to talk about mega menus. We all know what they are. You go to a website, you mouse over the menu, and this giant box pops up with all kinds of information in there. We're going to offer two different ways to add that to your Wix website today, code and no code. A little asterisk there, there is a full code option that is much more sophisticated. Uh, we're not going to cover that here today. We're going to go strictly with no code and light code, very light code. We're going to call it code versus no code. All right. So let's take a look at a couple of really solid mega menus out there right now. We'll talk a little bit about when to use it, and then we'll dive right into the two options. Let's take a look first at Envision. This is a collaborative app. Many of you have probably heard of it. You click product, boom, a lot of information, three columns, some visual elements, customers, all text, three columns, two rows, resources, again, lots of information that we're seeing here. Go to Danielle Draper, right? Uh, some kind of fashion website. So we click over, mouse over, excuse me, jewelry, personalized, brand. You can see we get pretty similar looks, some kind of column and image, brand and lookbook are all image based, and then you get a hybrid here and contact. But again, displaying a lot of information, and that's the common thread here. If you have a lot of information to display, a big e-commerce catalog, a media site with a lot of topics, you might want to consider a mega menu. You also might want to consider it if you just want to differentiate. Maybe you just want this visual display of information in your menu. Just be careful and keep in mind that most websites are about funnels. Where are you trying to funnel the visitor into? So a menu, a navigation menu, its primary purpose is to get the visitor from that page, likely the home page, deeper into the site. So if you're distracting them with lots of flash or, or imagery, uh, you might be hurting your conversion rate. You might not be getting as many conversions as you possibly could. A little saying we have here, the biz ladder is flash does not equal cash. So just because it looks great, doesn't mean it's going to turn into revenue or leads or whatever you're trying to accomplish on your website. So let's dive right in code versus no code. There are some considerations. We'll, we'll touch on them briefly here. We'll, we'll talk about them throughout. How do you want it to display on mobile? If you do, you probably shouldn't. Do you want it hundred percent dynamic or hard coded in some fashion? What's your comfort level with code? You just want to completely avoid even the light code version. That's fine. What's the desired exit action, meaning, uh, a hover away from the mega menu or an actual click. Do you have a preference there? Alignment gets tricky with the no code option. We'll talk about that. And what kind of delay do you want on this mega menu? The no code option is gonna have a, a little delay in most cases. Let's dive in, let's talk no code. Pretty simple, this is gonna be utilizing a light box. So we're gonna click in here. We're gonna go to interactive. We have a bunch of different starting points for light boxes. I recommend using one of the welcome uh, light boxes. You can try lots of different ones here. The reason is control. You can control placement of the light box itself and the objects using uh, the settings in the light box. A little better with this subscribe light box. First thing we're going to do is change the overlay background, get rid of that. You can leave it. Traditionally, light boxes don't obscure the background the rest of the page. Now we're going to change where this is. And this is what I was talking about alignment. This will get tricky with light boxes. You have to test this out on different screen sizes. I've got a left aligned menu. I've got about 120 pixel offset. You can play with that, get it perfect. And there we go. Now let's do a little change here. All right. Let's get rid of the animation. In my opinion, again, nav menus are meant to deliver visitors to other parts of your site. Don't delay, don't stall, don't give them reason to leave the site. Every fraction of a second matters. So I remove animations for these purposes. I try to remove animations with any sort of interactive element. I, I just really don't like clicking and then making the visitor wait. It might look great the first time, it's just gonna annoy them the second, the 10th, the 100th time they have to click and wait. So anyway, off the soapbox, get rid of the animation. We have to change the auto display. We don't want the light box showing up just when somebody hits the page, so we'll click no. 
I think we lost our X icon, so we'll just toggle that. There it goes, pops back in. Obviously you can change whatever you need to in this light box. We're just gonna leave it as is for now. You can add any elements you want to it, text, images, dividers, make it look however you want. All right, so then we will click out of there. Let's exit out of our light box there. All right, now we have to link to it. Our, our light box exists. You know what, let's change that. Let's change it to menu just so we know. It, it's there, but how do we access it? What we wanna do is create a link menu item. Link to a light box. It's the only one in there, that's easy. And this will be big old menu one. You can create as many of these as you want. So if you have you know, a very big site with lots of information, you can create multiple light boxes and triggers and just trigger whichever one you want. All right, we'll go ahead and click that, we'll save, and we'll take a look at this. So you can see on click, our light box pops up. There's a little offset there. That's because of this upgrade to remove Wix ads. This will be mostly be a set it and forget it, you know, offset, uh, vertical offset, but it's a little off now, that's fine. You can see when I move my mouse outside of this light box, nothing happens. I can click the X, closes it, obvious, right? I can click outside of light box, closes it, but the mouse action, the hover action does not do anything to this light box. Keep that in mind when we take a look at the code option. All right, I also wanna show you a really important thing on Wix uh, editor, especially editor X of course, but even editor, I'm on a big desktop monitor here. It might be 31 inches. I, wanna, I need to look at how this appears on smaller versions. You don't have to get exact. You can just kind of maneuver the browser size, the window size, and get a good look at how this light box appears on smaller versions. You are likely to run into some alignment challenges, frustrations with these light boxes and this layout. For example, I, I know there are some recommendations out there. You set a position and then you stretch it and let's add that offset back in. Let's put this in here. This, this behaves a little weird uh, when you start talking about alignment. Okay, I don't know why I can't. There's the first bit of weirdness. I don't know why I can't choose that, but we're not gonna follow that bug to its conclusion. Let's save it, let's preview it. Let me show you what this was all about. So, big old menu, boom, pops up. All right, let's check some other sites. Okay, it's not bad, but ooh, what's this? Horizontal scroll, where did that come from? Yeah, our light box is creating a weird horizontal scroll down here and we can't click it because it actually exits the light box when we get in there and some of our image is cut off here. So some weirdness starts to happen with alignment and the light box option. That's why I usually just keep it isolated to the menu itself. I'm clicking back undo here. I usually just keep it isolated underneath wherever the menu is on the site. All right, so that's the no code option. That's the light box option added on its surface. Let's take a look at the code option. All right, I've got my light box menu going off the screen here. We're gonna talk about the code option now. If you're afraid of code, don't be. This is very simple. You can turn dev mode on and off so you don't ever have to look at it when you're editing your site after you get this set and forget. But the first thing you do need to accomplish is turning on dev mode. That's up here in your menu. Turn it on. It'll add all kinds of little windows and widgets. Let's get my picture out of the way there. All right. Generally what we want to do for the code, light code option for these mega menus is use a button to trigger it. Why? Well, buttons are made for links. They have hover actions. They're good on mobile. Uh, they generally work. You can use any object you want to trigger this. I recommend a button. Let's go ahead and add a button. Let's drop it right in our header. You can change the design. Let's say we want it we want to just make it look like a text element. So let's get rid of our border 
and change our text to black. And our hover, we can leave that. Say we don't worry about that. Fill for hover is there. So, so there we go. It just kind of looks like this menu. Okay, the font's off a little bit, but it just kind of looks like that menu, right? So then what we want to create is a container, right? A box. Let's drop that over here too. I'm going to show you a trick. There's definitely a question on how to get this to trigger on every single page of the website. Right now, this container is only on my home page. I could pin it. That gets weird. It really doesn't work. So here's a trick to get this to appear on every page. Trick the system to think it's inside the header. How do you do that? You drag it into the header. You drop it. You drag it back out, but not all the way. See if I go all the way out, it says attach the strip. I don't want to trigger that. Then I can resize it. Then I can choose my arrow keys and move it around. Move it around wherever you want. We're just going to leave it right here for now. This is a container box. You can add whatever you want to this. Same thing as with the light box. Let's do, uh, I don't think we have any images in here. No, because we just created this. Uh, let's go dumbbells. Two Bs, one B. I don't know. Let's see. Okay, that works. Weights. There we go. Weights. Drop it in text drop it in duplicate again these are not going to be aesthetically uh, pleasing or acceptable but you get the point here and you can add in all kinds of stuff here right you can add in uh, decorative if you have any anything in there you get horizontal lines vertical lines whatever you want to do to organize this you know jumping over to Envision, uh, you can see they've got some vertical dividers. Things are neatly organized. Keep it simple. Get that visitor farther down the funnel. All right, so we've got our box here. Wix thinks it's in the header. Let's confirm that. Yep. Our box thinks it's in the header. Perfect. That's what we want you to think, Wix. Okay. Now here's where the, the code comes, comes into play, right? So the button itself, I've, you see I've got this little... ID down here. Uh, it says ID. These are, these are the properties of this object. All right. So let's name this uh, just so it's not confusing. Menu to button. Okay. What we need to do is, uh, you know what? Let's do this while we're talking naming and properties. Let's name this menu box as well. You can see when I click out, look at this little ID change it's this text element now I go to box it says box four let's change that to mega get it mega menu box all right we need to trigger this right now that nothing's gonna happen that box just kind of lives there and we need to handle the fact that it's always appearing there right now so let's do two things first let's make this disappear until it's triggered let's open our master page JavaScript Default values, set the element state when the page loads. We want it hidden. We don't want this to appear. All right, so hidden. Let's go back up here to button. Now we're gonna tell the button, you can see what it did there, it made it a little transparent. That means it's hidden on page load. Now, this button, we need to tell it, okay, when somebody hovers over this button, show that box. All right, so we go down here in the properties, event handlers, just a fancy way to say, what actions happen when this trigger occurs? So event handlers on mouse in. All right, we're gonna add it. You can see it added, I don't know, 18 lines of who knows what over here. Just a function. It added menu to button mouse in event. All right, then we're gonna take a little bit of code right here. You can pause, zoom in on this. Uh, YouTube doesn't usually let us drop code into the description. You can message us, we'll give it to you if you want, it's pretty simple. So we're gonna say, uh, big menu is something we had named before when we were testing this out. So what do we call it? Mega, menu. oh, there it is, look, Wix. I already created it for, for us. 
Mega Menu Show. That's what happens when you mouse over. Now what happens when the mouse leaves the box? Okay, so how does the menu disappear when somebody's done looking at it? Because we've got the mouse in event, the hover effect, when we have the button selected. Let's get rid of that. The mouse in event is there. How do we handle the exit? All right, so let's click on the box. And on mouse out. So on mouse out. Now notice how it says hide down there, right there. And we're not big menu. We know we use a different name here. Mega menu, there we go. All right. So it's gonna show when they mouse over button. It's gonna hide when they mouse out of the box itself. Let's preview it and we'll show you. It's a little bit funky. It's not perfect, but this is what you get with light code. So you can see, oh, it's still there. I'm mousing it. Mousing. I'm moving the mouse all over the screen. It's still showing. I have to mouse in and then out to get it to not show. There's a fancier way to do this, connecting the button to the box, uh, a little more in-depth code, but this is the very simple way to mouse out. All right, let's talk a little bit about mobile. Get a lot of questions. I want my mega menu on mobile. The first question we ask is why? Why do you want a big giant menu on mobile when there's kind of already one there? Right? When you click on that hamburger menu, you get this. It overlaps. You get this expandable menu. This is best practice for mobile. You can add images to this pop out if you want. You can play with this menu. You've kind of already got a mega menu on mobile. All right. You probably just want to hide this button on mobile. You probably just want to hide this container box on mobile. You probably just want to move everything up on mobile, right? It's really already there. So our recommendation is just don't use the mega menu on mobile. Play with the expandable existing mobile menu and work out what you want to do inside of there. Okay, we're going to stop there. Any questions, please reach out.